shows that like I don't know what happened in the 80s or the 90s that like gave people like a comedy club PTSD that people are still afraid to sit in the front row it's just but people are like oh no they're gonna make fun of us they're gonna make fun of us don't sit in the front row but that's cool that you're sitting in the front row that's very cool of you I, you know, I, I bet there are a lot of strippers out there that wish that their audiences had the fear of the front row that most comedy club audiences do you know if you go to a strip club, man, the, uh, the front row is a magnet for perverts. But, you know, I just been, I don't actually find that kind of refreshing of going to a strip club and, the, and then all of a sudden the stripper just takes out a microphone and starts making fun of the people in the front row. Wouldn't that be, that'd be refreshing? That'd be like, hey, where'd you get that shirt? Uh, you lose a bet or something? Where are you from? Well, I'll speak much slower then. You know, all the... Not the best crowd work out of a, you know... That's not how she got the gig in the first place, but I think that would be entertaining. Uh, I, I like to try to learn something new every day, and uh, I was at a Tim Hortons, and I learned this. Uh, there is a, uh, a beverage called a 4x4. A four four. I was standing in line, and the guy in line in front of me uh, ordered something called a 4x4. Four four. I didn't know what it was. I kind of I asked him, but I kind of could have figured it out on my own. But basically, a 4x4 four four is that's when you get uh, four creams and four sugars, and you put it in a medium-sized cup. I was like, isn't that fucking cake? Aren't you, aren't you drinking cake at that point? Shouldn't you be kind of embarrassed too? Like, isn't that the kind of coffee order you just write on a piece of paper and just slide to the guy behind the counter? Like you're gonna rob the place or buy like, you know, magazine porn or something like that? Like, that's my coffee, that's my porn, you know? And that is not a going back to work beverage, oh my God, that is a lie down and enjoy your diabetes beverage. You are not getting a lot of shit done after you drink a mug of cake. I am, uh, I'm st I am in a relationship uh, myself at this point, uh, but uh, it's good. And I think, you know, if, if you're in love, I think that's, that's awesome, uh, but I think the longer that you are in a relationship, the love turns into sort of different, different formations and warps them into different shit. Uh, but you know what I think love is? I think sometimes love is driving home with the one that you love, and sometimes they drive you so crazy that you want to push them out of a moving car yet you still want them to be there when you get home. That's what I think love is. Or at that point, you know. But uh, my, uh, my ex uh, used to always comment that I wasn't that romantic. And I think I'm, I'm, more, I'm, I'm better at romance in this relationship, I have to say that. Uh, but my ex called me out once when we were uh, sitting in a park and uh, we see this elderly couple walk past us and they're holding hands. And she goes, aw, isn't that sweet? They've been together for so long, and they're still so much in love that they're holding hands. And I was like, yeah, they're probably holding hands so one of them just doesn't wander off somewhere, okay? I don't know if that's love, I think it's more like the buddy system, all right? I'm sure they're very happy together, but I hope they get back to wherever they started from, but don't give them too much credit, okay? My, uh, my girlfriend, uh, we actually had to go down, we didn't have to, we wanted to go down to this destination wedding in Mexico. Uh, it was at a, uh, an all-inclusive, and uh, anyone here uh, go down to an all-inclusive before? Do that Canadian thing, all the drinks are free. All the drinks are free. It's awesome, man. You don't have to, have to walk around with a wall or anything like that. And it was always weird. It was like, there was like a family section of the resort that we were at, and then there was like an adults-only section. And as soon as I hear adults only, I think there's going to be like two people fucking around every corner. I'm just like, hey, you two, you can't come there. Don't do that, you know? But uh, it just means that there's no kids. There's no kids there on the adult side, right? And uh, one thing I was worried about, and this one, I, I worry about this everywhere I travel, is if I'm going to be able to find marijuana there. <laughs> and uh, if you go to a, a, an all-inclusive resort or any resort, or just Mexico in general, you do not have to worry about finding marijuana, right? Because the, uh, the first quarter of the beach belongs to Mexico, uh, to, belongs to the resort, 
and the other three quarters of the beach belongs to Mexico. It's just public, you know, right? Uh, so there are these guys uh, that walk up and down the beach the whole time, and they're selling uh, like jewelry and T-shirts and sunglasses and cigars, right? But uh, this is basically how uh, if you if, if someone thinks that you want to buy a cigar, this is basically how it goes. Uh, excuse me, senor, would you like to buy a cigar? Uh, no, 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 that's uh, quite all right. Uh, marijuana, cocaina? It's like, whoa, that escalated awfully fast. <laughs> there was no pause, you know? There wasn't no international sign of uh, smoke a joint or tap the nose for cocaine. It was, marijuana, cocaina? You know, no, uh, are you cool? Or are you a cop? You know, none of that. None of that at all. And uh, the one thing, as soon as they find out that you're from Canada, they immediately give you one of those uh, doctors, I got good news and I got bad news speeches for you. Because our repu uh, the re Mar Canadian marijuana has an amazing reputation. It honestly does. Right? So he found out I was from Canada. And, he, and this is his reaction. He was like, ah, I got good news and I got bad news. The bad news is it's not going to be as good as your Canadian weed. You don't think you're going to get some seeds? You're going to get some seeds, man. <laughs> But the good news is, I got some marijuana. <laughs> like that's, that's, all, that's the only good news I need, right? And it's bad. It is shit marijuana. It basically is the kind of thing that just reminds you of marijuana. It was like, oh, well, that was a nice 15 minutes. Okay, well, let's smoke another joint again. <laughs> Should last a little longer than that. Uh, but uh, once I, I uh, and you gotta go off to a resort. Don't be one of those fucking assholes who just stays on the resort. Hey, this is great. Mexico's wonderful. Well, yeah, the resort's wonderful, but you gotta go off the resort. And I went into the town one time, and uh, man, if I got thought, if I thought I was offered marijuana and, and cocaine before, oh my God, you go off the resort. They're like, hey, Canada, Blue Jays, Maple believes marijuana, cocaine. I was like, <laughs> Well, I support the local team, and what were the other two things you said? <laughs> um, but also, what, and then as soon as they find out that you're not interested in marijuana or cocaine, then they're immediately on, would you like to find some women? Oh, women, yeah. They find some women, you know, like, so, women? I was like, no, no, that's quite all right. No, I'm, I'm just buying a luchador wrestling mask. I'll be on my way, sir. No, no, no. no, no women. And, and, and I swear to God, as, as I'm walking away, after refusing women a number of time, I actually hear this. Men? Like, no, I'm not. No. And then it was like a cliche out of like some 80s movie where everyone goes down to Tijuana to get laid. Uh, I'm walking away and I actually hear someone go, Do you want to meet my sister? I was like, oh, Hello, stop right there. Of course, of course, I, I, I do want to pay for sex, but only with a woman with a shitty brother. And I want to support a family business. Oh my goodness, I, didn't know, I had no idea. I had no idea. But uh, one thing I do recommend, if you go down uh, and if you go off the resort, you go into one of the marketplaces, uh, do not buy the first thing that you see. The first thing that you see is kind of cool. You're like, oh, hey, man, I, I bet there's only one of those in the market. But no, 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 you're going to see about 80 of them wherever you go, right? And uh, this is my favorite sales technique when I was in Mexico. Someone would go up to you and they'd offer you something. You'd be like, no, 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 it's okay. And then they'd be like, uh, oh, senor, ah, my boss, he's gone away for the day. So how about I give you an extra special price? And then I was like, no, 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 so that's quite all right. And then, but that was like one sales technique I never understood. Like, supposedly his boss is going to come back, and won't he find some discrepancy in the numbers and the amount of jewelry that they have? Is that not going to backfire him on him at some point? You know, it's sort of like whenever I watch a porn movie, and like a guy uh, is is there to fix the pipes, and then the woman doesn't have enough money to pay for to fix the pipes, so she gives him a blowjob in exchanging to fix the pipes. I'm always like, is that guy like an independent contractor, or does he work for someone else? Is he gonna have to go back to the office and give his boss like 20% of the blowjob that he just got? <laughs> I know I should just jerk off when I watch porn, but I just I had other questions. All right, that's been awesome. Thank you guys so much. Have a good night.